I'm always asked, how did you break the story of Monica Lewinsky? The Monica Lewinsky story didn't begin in Washington. It all began when a group of reporters went down to Arkansas and started looking into, say, the other side of Bill Clinton. Suddenly, people were learning much more about Arkansas than perhaps they really wanted to know. And how the Clintons had may or may not have tried to make money in, in ways that were unethical. Bill Clinton was seen as slippery, and in many ways he was slippery. It seemed there were deals, there were aspects to his background that gave rise to suspicions. The media pounced on it. The surface elements at least are juicy and dramatic. Questions of cover-up, cronyism, missing money, mysterious suicide. Whitewater was a land deal that went sour. The Clintons weren't rich. They had no money. The governor made nothing, and she was a lawyer at a small law firm. Governor of Arkansas made $30,000 a year, if I remember correctly. They were driven. They were ambitious. They wanted more in every respect. And along came Jim McDougal. When a guy like Jim McDougal comes around and says, ooh, let's invest in this land deal in Whitewater, it seemed like uh, a good, sure thing. The McDougals, well, they were Bill and Hillary's business partners. They were crooks. So why would you affiliate uh, with a couple of known shady characters if you're Bill and Hillary? Because you could. I have not done anything illegal, unethical, or dishonorable, especially dishonorable. McDougal was kind of this flamboyant banker who was doing weird deals in Arkansas. I don't think they ever really did their due diligence on that deal, and that kind of bit them later on. One of the things the Democrats and uh, good government Republicans learned from the Nixon period was get it out into the open fast. Get an independent prosecutor. Just do it. Because if you don't do it, you are sort of sending the signal that you have something to hide. That's when Ken Starr enters the story. Good morning. How are you today? Ken Starr at the time was a well-renowned conservative judge in Washington. Thank you. Actually on everyone's shortlist to become a Supreme Court justice. I'm confident that I'm going to be completely fair about this. He was very quiet, sort of slightly nerdy. Well, some familiar faces. There's always been the suspicion that when he got the Whitewater Independent Counsel job, he became a prosecutor with a political goal that he wanted to get ahead and that he saw getting Clinton's scalp as part of that. The decision to appoint a special prosecutor was actually made by Bill Clinton. I think President Clinton was simply responding to what he viewed as political uh, pressure. Uh, and he has such robust self-confidence that he may very well have thought, what can be here? I, I don't know, obviously, you're asking me to opine on his motivations. The Starr investigation started off being a Whitewater investigation and it ended up being, you know, any dirt you could find on Bill Clinton. We here inside the Beltway are obsessed with Gates, and now we have Travelgate. They fired the travel staff and put a friend in charge of it. That became an investigation. Out of one of those investigations, some files disappeared. File gate. It was just like one gate after another. I really don't um, have anything to add specifically to that because I'm not. What does that do? It creates a cloud. It creates a cloud of suspicion from the get-go. There was always this sort of undercurrent of they're corrupt. The Clintons weren't transparent. That ended up extending these investigations along with the partisan appetite to, to pursue them. There are too many questions and there are too many implications, frankly, right. of breaking the law. The Clintons kept their privacy so true that it made it seem like there was something more there than there ever was. And I truly believe that was the fatal flaw of the Clinton presidency. Because in a lot of these investigations, there wasn't a lot of there there. They were very fortunate that key documents uh, had disappeared. And then Jim McDougal died in prison. He died by natural causes. Uh, and so you have the combination of lack of documentation and lack of witnesses. There just seemed to be instance after instance 
Clinton seemed to escape their clutches. Kenneth Starr's investigation began three and a half years and $30 million ago. I can't comment on the specifics. What Ken Starr finds is nothing. So for all intents and purposes, he should wind up his investigation. But then, and this is why, this, this is why the Clinton story is beyond believable. Bill Clinton's lawyers have been dealing with the consequences of his promiscuity in Arkansas. Most famously was the Paula Jones story. That story was told because there were two troopers corroborating the story. Mrs. Clinton said today the allegations by two Arkansas state troopers that they helped Mr. Clinton lead a double life with other women when he was governor will end up in the garbage can. It seemed like one of those hijink stories out of Arkansas. He was obsessed with women. And he, on several occasions, would tell me the blonde or the brunette or the redhead. He exposed himself and um, he asked me to kiss it. And the consequence of that is that he gives Ken Starr a lifeboat. He gives him an opportunity to leave the sinking ship of the Whitewater investigation and move to a ship that has nothing to do with Whitewater. So it was a meandering path through Whitewater and then Travelgate, and then Filegate, then Paula Jones, and then Kim Monica. Monica, 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 Monica.